What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julia. Today's video is gonna be all about the basics of nutrition. And like always, I'm gonna keep things short, sweet, to the point, very simple and easy to understand because I say this all the time, if it's easy to understand, it is way easier to apply to your lifestyle. And for anyone who didn't know, I am a certified personal trainer, so I have a nutrition education background from that, as well as a sports nutrition minor in college. I think nutrition is really interesting. Yes, it can be very complex and complicated if we get into like the nitty gritty. But like I said, we're keeping things simple. So without further ado, make sure to subscribe and let's get into it. So jumping right into it, there are six nutrients that your body needs and those are carbohydrates, fats, protein, vitamins, minerals, and water. Your body needs all of those things in order to function properly. Your macronutrients are your carbohydrates, your protein, and your fats. Those are nutrients that your body needs in large quantities. And then your micronutrients would be those vitamins and minerals. Your body needs them in a little bit smaller quantities. We're keeping the focus on the macronutrients for this video. And like I said, those are the nutrients that your body needs in much larger amounts, your carbs, your fats, and your protein. And in terms of calories, carbs and protein actually both yield four calories per gram, while fats yield nine calories per gram. The main thing you wanna think about when you are thinking about carbohydrates is that they are your body's primary fuel source and your body's preferred fuel source. So carbohydrates are actually made up of sugar molecules that get broken down into glucose and your body uses that as fuel. And every single cell and tissue in the body uses that glucose for energy. And when it comes to protein, you can basically think of this as the building block of tissues. Protein is made up of amino acids and it's essential for the growth and repair of the tissues within your body, especially muscle. And that is why I always stress the importance of your protein intake. And then it is also essential for making hormones hormones and enzymes. Protein can be used as a fuel source, but it's really only if your carbohydrate and fat sources are completely depleted. It's basically like the last ditch effort. Then your body will use protein for energy, but that's not really ideal. And lastly, when it comes to fat, you wanna think of this as your body's insulator and also an energy source. You obviously need fat to absorb the fat soluble vitamins and the fat on your body helps insulate your body. And when you have a healthy level of fat, it actually helps you have a properly functioning metabolism. It helps with a lot of your hormones, but this can get to a level where if you have too much excess fat, there could be health complications, but your body still needs fat in order to function properly. So don't just think that fat is a bad thing. There are good fats and there are bad fats, but your body does need fat within its diet, within its nutrition in order to function properly. And since I just touched on it, I'll quickly run through the whole good fats versus bad fats, as well as good and bad carbohydrates, AKA your unrefined and refined carbohydrates. But when it comes to fats, your good fats are gonna be your monounsaturated fats and your polyunsaturated fats, while your bad fats are gonna be those trans fats and those saturated fats. When it comes to carbs, your more nutritious option are gonna be those unrefined carbohydrates. Those are gonna be your whole grain options, whole foods, starchy vegetables, your fruits. And then the less nutritious option is going to be your refined carbohydrates. Those are typically more processed, like our baked goods, our cereals, stuff like that. It's just way less nutrient dense than our unrefined options. And I totally meant to mention this earlier when I was going over the three macronutrients, but I want to quickly run through like five or six examples of foods that are rich in carbohydrates, rich in proteins, and rich in fats so that you all are more informed and more educated when grocery shopping and creating your meals. You know exactly what is going on your plate, you know exactly what is going into your body, and you know the macronutrients you are consuming, and now you know the function of those macronutrients. So a few great examples of food foods that are rich in carbohydrates would be rice, oats, breads, fruits, and vegetables. Um, some foods that are rich in protein would be eggs, egg whites, chicken, shrimp, turkey, lean beef, lean bison, Greek yogurt, 
some foods that are rich in fat would be cooking oils like coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, avocados, different nuts and seeds and different seafoods like trout and salmon. There are so many amazing sources for all three of the macronutrients and so many amazing whole food sources for all three of the macronutrients. And speaking of whole foods, I do get a lot of questions about my specific diet. And if you've watched my full days of eating, you know that I have a whole lot of balance within my diet, but I always say that I try to primarily stick to a whole foods based diet, meaning majority of the foods that I eat are whole food sources. It's just simple to me. It's very black and white. It's very easy to understand. You can look at a food and you know if it's a whole food source or not. But with that being said, I do practice 80-20. I love having balance in there. So about 80% of what I eat are whole food sources and the other 20 are kind of whatever I want. And that's also a diet I suggest to a lot of my clients. A lot of my clients have tried other diets and found some success and then after a while it stopped working and they all just wanted something that works, is like a lifestyle and has balance within it. So that's always my recommendation. But once again, I am not a registered dietitian. I am a certified personal trainer and I did study sports nutrition. This is just what works best for me and a whole lot of my clients. I'm not all saying that you all need to practice 80-20 and do a whole foods based diet, but that is what I personally do and I get a whole lot of questions about it. So hopefully that cleared everything up. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys and try it if you want. All right, the last thing I wanted to mention in this little nutrition 101 chit chat is actually total daily energy expenditure and how it can be manipulated for weight loss, weight gain, or maintaining where you're at. It's not really related to macronutrients, but I have a feeling a lot of people want to learn more about it. And it's honestly pretty darn simple. It's very black and white. And that is because it is literally just an equation. So your total daily energy expenditure is actually made up of your basal metabolic rate, so the calories your body burns just at rest, living if you were to sit on the couch all day long, plus your physical activity, whatever calories you burn while actually doing your workout that day, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, so this would be taking the stairs at work, walking through a parking lot things where you're moving but not actually doing like your workout for the day and then also the thermic effect of food so this is the energy your body uses in order to digest the food it eats now that we know what goes into your total daily energy expenditure let's look at someone who wants to lose weight maintain weight and gain weight and the energy balance or imbalance that has to be there in order for them to do so so when it comes to someone who's just trying to maintain where they're at they're gonna to wanna to make sure that they actually have an energy balance. So the calories in are equal to calories out. That way they stay the same. And they wanna make sure they have that balance every single day. If someone is trying to lose weight, they are going to have to be in a calorie deficit. That is the only way to lose weight. So they need an energy imbalance. Their calories being expended and burned on a daily basis actually needs to be greater than the calories they are consuming on a daily basis. And that needs to be a consistent imbalance where calories out is greater than calories in. That will put them in a calorie deficit and that will help them lose weight. If someone wants to gain weight, they need to be in a calorie surplus once again, an energy imbalance, but this time you wanna make sure the calories that are being expended and burned is actually less than the calories that are being consumed. So you wanna burn less than you are eating and that way you'll be in a calorie surplus and you will gain weight. All right, hopefully those equations made sense to you guys. Like I said, they're very black and white. It's pretty darn simple. Yes, it can be extremely difficult to actually adhere to a consistent calorie deficit or a consistent calorie surplus or consistent maintenance, but the concepts themselves are very simple very straightforward it's just whether or not you can actually apply them but don't worry nutrition is literally the hardest piece of the puzzle for majority of people on their health and fitness journey like you are not alone if it is your main struggle and a quick way i want to tie in macronutrients with your total daily energy expenditure and this energy imbalance would be if you are eating enough protein, if you're really focusing on that protein intake and prioritizing it while also working out, preferably strength training, then you are going to build muscle. And the more muscle you build, the more calories your body actually needs at rest in order to sustain that muscle you have built. So this in turn actually increases that metabolism. So that's one way that you can help 
increase your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which is part of your total daily energy expenditure. Another way to increase your total daily energy expenditure would be through your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So if you're someone who's already eating healthy, eating your protein, getting your workouts in, then you can do little bits of extra movement throughout the day to increase your NEAT. So this could be parking farther away in a parking lot so you have to walk farther to your destination. If you work in an office, maybe getting up every so often and just walking around, taking calls while walking around, taking the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator, just little things here and there that seem so simple and minute, like it almost doesn't seem worth it, but at the end of the day, it really does add up to help increase your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, thus increasing your total daily energy expenditure thus increasing that calorie deficit if your goal is weight loss. Once again, it is just an example. I just wanted to help tie all of that together so you guys could get a better understanding, but I'm going to wrap this video up here because I feel like if I keep talking, this is just gonna go on and on forever. And I wanna keep this very basic, very simple, and very applicable to your all's lives. So hopefully this video did just that. If you guys wanna see more in-depth, like deep dive videos into the nitty gritty of nutrition, please let me know because I would love to make those for you guys. But if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a like, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time.